Get going. Okay. Okay, the um, next chapter is a chapter about the uh, spreadsheets. Uh, we will be looking at uh, the Excel and, and Google spreadsheets. Um, yeah, we will read how to write the data and read data from, from those. Um, yeah, I, this one is a, it's a paper. It has some excellent um, tips and I think it's, it deserves the shout out and 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 a read through. Um, yeah, because uh, if you if you have had the pleasure is to work uh with 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 data that you receive that that doesn't comply with with these rules, yeah, it, it it becomes a thing. So in my case, last couple of months I received the the biggest uh the biggest thing people tend to do is not being consistent. Uh, I have received uh files where <laughs> in some cases a single file for a month of data and in other cases a file with a worksheet for every week <laughs> and then they they start uh, changing the column names or the order um the data the dates sorry it's also something that uh, i've seen files with a single column and a single file using different uh, different ways of writing the date so this if you read this through I, I think it's a it's a it's a very interesting read and it's on, not only because it says that data organization is spreadsheets but I think it also it, it applies to the data in general so it, it has some some very nice tips that uh, that people could use so in this case we were going to be working with Microsoft Excel of course, Everybody knows Excel. Excel, without Excel, a lot of top 100 and 500 companies couldn't be run. <laughs> um, we will use the these libraries, the read Excel and the write Excel, and of course, tidyverse. When you read in to read data from Excel, you can use the different um function if you if you already know. The extension, XLS or XLS X for the newer version, but if you use Read Excel, it will, it will guess the 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 file type based on the input. So maybe this one is easier to use it overall. Um, when we we have uh this examples um sheet where we have a student, this is how it would look in the in Excel. Um, we can read it. And say read Excel data students Excel X, and we get the information. So some things to yet you already can see is for example the way the names are. There are data that's not available. Um, there are some things that are already standing out that we will be uh, tackling to to have the information the data set as as it should be. So when you read Excel, you get a, uh, a table with the information that was read in. The first thing that we will be changing are the column names, because as you can see in the previous in Excel, you have students, space ID, and full name, and then you have favorite dot food, and then you have uh, this one is um, camel case or snake case. I can think it's a snake case, and then you have um all capital all capital letters so here this is one of the things where the names are, are not um consistent so one thing that you can do is create consistent names instead of using spaces you will use um uh underscores so student underscore id full name favorite views meal plan and age everything in, in lowercase And then you get the same information, but in this case, because you are giving the, the, the column names that you want, because you're giving the, the column names that you want, um, it will be added as a row um, of, your, of, your, of your data set. Data set. So actually you are reading in, um, 
you are given the column names, but you are also reading in the old column names. To fix that, you can read in the data, give the column names that you, that you have, that you want, and then skip the first column. First uh, row, sorry that you then so that you can have the the data frame the table the, the way that you want it so in this case you have the first row with the information with the with the with the names and then you really have the information the data that you read with missing data also let's in this you can see that for example it in the case, in this case, it, it identified because it was a real mis missing data. It was an empty cell in Excel. So when you read the data with read Excel, it will identify it as a as a missing data NA. But this was a, a character, this a string that was um that was identified. So the the people that made the, the sheet put N slash A as a as a for for uh missing data. So to get that information also, so to get it as, as a missing data, you have to tell the function read Excel that this string is also a missing data. That you can do with this, where you do NA is any empty string is a missing data, and also a string that N slash A. And that way you can, the one that was empty is an NA and the one that had the, the string N slash A is, is now also an NA. The other thing that you will see is it will try to um, guess the, the, the column types and you see the ID because it's all um, integers, it will stay double. Those are all, and the rest are all char characters. In this case, because one of the ages was built in as five, so with the string five instead of the number five. So if you want to give the, if you already know beforehand what the column types are, you can pass that information to as a, as a, as a vector. So you want the first to be numeric, the second text, text, and the last one um, numeric. But when you do that, the one that we highlight, highlighted before, the age that was um, written down as five, it, if you are expecting a numeric and you have the number five, it will um, deal with it and it will consider it a, 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 a missing value because it's, uh, of course, it's not it's not a, a, a numeric value. So in, in this case, you are creating a problem with yourself by um, forcing it to be numeric while there is an, a, 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 a one of the cells that have a string in it. To, do, to deal with that, one other option is to just read it as a text. So read in the files, get the information, and then this one that is five, that should be a numeric, instead of the string five, it should be the numeric five. This one then you can use a mutate. And in that case, you can um, change the five, the string five for the uh, integer five. And then you can um, make the, 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 column from H, then you can make it a, a integer or a double. One thing that you also can do with Excel, when you have, um, instead of a, a single five file that has a single worksheet in it, you can have a multiple worksheet. It's uh, in the paper that I, showed at the at the at the start they say it sometimes it's better to have single file um single file single worksheet because then it will be easier for example to convert to to csv which also help you at back with backing up etc cetera, etc cetera. 
but in the case that you have a, a single five file with different um with multiple sheets in it then you can have also um uh, functions in r to read every specific uh, a single um, worksheet in the excel file to do that you will have to read excel the excel file that you want to read and then you have to pass also as an argument um the sheet name in this case you will have uh, the table with the information of the penguins data that we have seen in the past uh, in, in, in our examples um Here we have also the, the same issue where we have um, NAs, but again, if we pass the, the argument NA is and the string that is an NA, then we will then we will be able to um, highlight those NAs and have them in the in, in our table in our information as NAs. Also, if you don't know beforehand how many sheets or what are the sheets that is in the in the work in the Excel file, you can use the Excel sheets function to get the information of all the, the, the sheets. So in the case of the Penguin um, Excel file, when you call it with Excel sheets uh, on the Penguin XLX, you will, got, will get the different um, the three islands that you have, the Torgerson, Tor Bisco, and Dream Island. And uh, in that case, now that you know that the other uh, sheets that are available in the in the file, then you can eat, can you read in all the different um, sheets. So you have the different, the, the, you can also see the dimension of the data frame. And then if you have those data frame um, separate, you can use a bind with, with bind rows so that you can um, get a single data frame with all the penguins depending on their islands. Another thing that's also uh, discouraged in the paper that we saw beforehand that is that putting more information. So the, the paper, um, the tip in the paper is to only put the data, only really the data in the in the spreadsheet. But sometimes when you are using the same spreadsheet for calculations or for presentations, you um, people tend to put more information in the sheets that is not actually part of the data. Maybe, yes, they put other information so in this case, uh, in this blue um, rectang rectangle is what we really need. That's the real data. But if you just read in the sheet, the whole sheet, then you will get all this information that is not um, data that you need. So we can see that here, if we only read the, the complete um, Excel file, you will see a lot of information and the data actually starts here. And this is also information that's not a, that's not relevant. So to do so to only get the relevant information, you can read Excel with a range. And in this case, if we go back to the to the file, we can see that our range is from A5. It starts with A5, and you are going to F15. So this, this is the definition of the rect rectangle with the information that you need. So then you can use the read range so that you can uh, read Excel with range so that you can define the range, range of the where the information is. And in this case, then you get only the data that you need, the relevant data that you need um, to process. So that's, uh, um, yeah, that's, if you are not receiving the the Excel files with the with only the information in it, 
then you will have to check and open it. In, in my case, I, I received with, I and what I did was also because the range was varying between the different files, but when it started to, there was like a summary at, at the end and there was the word summary in, uh, in, in the cell that I didn't need. So what I did was, okay, I, I look for the start range, which was fixed, but the end range was not fixed, but I look for the word in the cell, I find the word, and then I say, okay, now I know um, the cell before, the, the, the rows before is the one that I need to define my range. So sometimes if you have, a, if it's not fixed, so you cannot put the, the, the number like A5 um, to F15, then you, maybe you have to search beforehand for the the the, the cell using a, a specific word or a specific um, condition that can define your range, and then you can use the range to uh, actually read only the part of the data that you need. One thing that we saw in the past, and was that's still true, that in CSV files, all values are strings. There is no data types. And then in Excel, what we can have is either uh, or for one of the four um, data types. You can either have a Boolean, like a true, false, or, or a not available, or a missing value. You can have a number, like an uh, inter integer or a uh, 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 floating point. You can have a date time and you can have string. Um, but when you are working with Excel files, that those that, which is something also um, in the case of the date time, the um, Excel basically use numbers for everything. So what you see in Excel, the date when it's formatted the same, it's it's just that it's formatted as date because underlying it's um storing it at as a as a number. So what you have to take care of is when you are um dealing with data um in Excel, you have to also double check that you are actually getting the data type that you that you need. Um, this is also an example. This is the example for for um, right into Excel, and where you can see also that the data types that you are used to in R um, don't carry over to to Excel. As an example, you have a bake sale where you have a factor. This item is the type of factor, and quantity is uh, are, are numbers. It's numeric. So when you don't create this table, you will have the item that is a factor and the quantity that's a double. If you write that information to an Excel, you will see this. So the items and the quantities, um, it looks good. But then when you read it in, remember that item was a factor. When you read it back in from Excel, you will get back that item as character the strings. So if you need to maintain your data type um, during different sessions, maybe in this case, Excel, maybe, not maybe, Excel is not uh, probably the best uh, um, choice for you. You can use Excel to share it with other people, but most probably if you want to use the data for um, other analyses in, in uh, R, um, you can use uh, rate, um, the one of the R's own um, file formats, for example, RDS, that you can write and then you will keep um, the information and also not only the data, but also the data types. So it will be easier for you to reuse the data. So maybe the, the, the flow will be use Excel to read in the data, convert it to the data types, and do the cleanup. And when you have the clean data set that you will be working it on um, for more time, that data set that you have cleaned up and have defined the data types, that one you can uh, write to a RDS for further um, analysis. So um, are PEF files actually maintain the R data types? 
Parquet, I don't know. I haven't worked with Parquet, but RDS do. Yes, it's a, it's native. Uh, it's exactly. native format. But I'm, I'm not sure. I I I started reading kind about of, Parquet. Yeah. We'll talk about it more in uh, you and know in a couple a, chapters. Exactly. Uh, it's um it's a it's not in R format. It's a like multi um language format and so mm -hmm. some of the r formats will translate over more you know better like it knows the difference between an integer and a decimal number for example i'm pretty sure um but if it's something that's pretty you know that's fairly r specific it's not going to keep that information um but yeah we'll get into it more because like i said earlier i haven't really dealt with arrow that much and so and Parquet is the is part of Arrow. Okay. But in two chapters. So yes. <laughs> um also we, we have been using this um um this is also like a, a, a hint or tip. Um the right Excel, for example, is lightweight. You can do simple um Writes to to Excel files, but if you really want to do styling and have some additional features, there is another uh, package that you can use. To I I did I haven't used this one I yet. I didn't have the need to because I actually <laughs> try not to have the need to to write to Excel. I, I rather um export to other formats. Um, but uh, it's there if anyone needs it. So after Excel, which is uh, the most well-known, so to speak, is also Google Sheets because it's uh, the alternative. It's online, it's free, so and it's web-based. So um, yeah, it's also loose, used a lot also when you need to collaborate. Of course, right now, Office, I haven't seen that. I haven't used that. Um, Office online with uh, 365. I don't know if there are, I guess there are, should be packages uh, to use R also with online um, Excel uh, function. Right now, I, I got I, I did I didn't investigate that, but I, I guess that there will be somewhere um, for online to work with with, with um, online um, Excel sheets. So in this case, with the Google Sheets from from Google, you also have uh, the Google Sheets four and the name. It's because it's using the AP API, the the, the version four. So um, you have, you will eventually. I mean, it's the API version four. If there is any at, at some point in the future, um, Google um, change or upgrade the API version, then you will have to double check if there will be a new um. Google Sheets um, library package for, for R, but for the moments we can happily work with the version four. Um, yeah, the basically the, the same um the same functions, maybe with some with, with other names, but you have the reach sheet and the range sheet because this you can also read only the range. And you can create uh, a new sheet and you can use use sheet right. But there is a thing. If you want to read from a public um public Google Sheet and you don't have want to authenticate, which is what I did in, in this case, um you you have to first run this um um code before this uh, function before so that you can do so to speak an anonymous uh, read, for example, or from a, from a public Google Sheet. But if the sheet is private, we will see that later on. But if the sheet is private, then you will have to authenticate so that you can access the, the sheet. Um, we have an example, similarly of the example of uh, the student that was an Excel file. We also have it online um, as a Google Sheet. And when you when you are going to do the read sheet, you will have to use the the URL. But 
Another thing that you can also do, instead of the whole URL, you can also use the ID, which is of course shorter and it can that you can use. So either use the URL or the ID. Um, in this case, as you can see, I'm using before reading, you are using the D out so that um, the program knows, R knows that you are going to do it um, anonymously without signing in. And you can do that because in this specific case, this spreadsheet is public, it's, it's shared publicly. When you do that, which sheet uh, students URL, you will get the, the same um, information. And be, uh, because it's the same example files, you will see also the same problems where you have students space ID and you have the different cases for the naming. So you can to fix that. Um, before fixing that, we are also, yeah, we are fixing things in, 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 one, uh, in one step here. We are giving the column names. We are also skipping the first um, row. We are showing which are the strings that are missing data so that it can um, um, identify those. But with the difference is, in this case, when we are saying which type of column data that we have, we are using this other notations where this is D is for double and C is for a uh, character for string. So this one is a double character character and that's what you do. So the, the data that you are reading in, you define the column types with the D, C for either um, character or a, um, or a double. And also the same as with Excel, if you have to read a specific sheet, then you have, if you have, it's again, the, uh, this is a public um, spreadsheet and you can read the, the, a specific sheet in the, in the Google sheet. That's similar and what you did in, in Excel. And also similar to Excel, if you want to get the names of the different sheets of the, the, the whole Google sheet, then you can use the sheet names with the URL. And again, it will show you the different um, sheets that are available so that you then can um, read those single sheets. And also similar to Excel, you can also read a range. It's the same, uh, it's the same um, um, argument you use the range and because it's a, a similar um, example that we're using example file, it's also, you put the, the, the number, the cell numbers that define the range, the upper, uh, the upper left and the lower right, so that you get uh, the rectangle of the, of the range. And also similar to Excel, in the case that you are that you have permission to write to the sheet, then you can also use um, write sheets to write to um, to a specific Google sheet. So and with the with the the, the thing about the authentication authentication, if you are having uh, if you want to read from a public um, Google Sheets, then you can use the D out. There's no problem, but if you want to work with the, um, so if you want to, if you have the, 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 the public sheet, you can use D out and just read the sheet. But if you have to, if you want to use um, authentication, then you have to, um, use the information here, you have to have the email and you have to check if you, one of the information, the information that you need to create the authentication. I think it's the way I've seen, because I, I, I've 
try to use it, but not in R. And sometimes you create a token or sometimes you have an API key. So there are different ways. So you will have to check out for your specific use case, how the, because I think it's also depends on how the sheet is shared. So um, yes, you have to double check um, how you can use the authentication so that you can read and if needed, also write to a, a light online Google sheet. So that was that. I'm not sure why this person was so excited to put this one, but uh, I left it in because maybe I'm excited too. And just, um, I didn't actually do the um, exercise, but I looked at it and the one, but I, I, I just thought I'm um, like, what is, what's the catch? So in this specific case, I saw that when you read it, we will probably get um, this one as, as, as empty files. But then I said, oh, okay, most probably what you will what you will have to do to get this information is use what we saw in missing values so that when you get this one, you will have, to, and then all these NAs, you will have to, what we had in, in, in the missing values, to, to use the one that was uh, fail everything. So in this case, you will have the NAs and you will you want to fail down. So you can do something similar and also with the, with this uh, file when you read it. So I think that's more or less of the hint for, for that case of the, for that exercise. So if there is any question or uh, something that you guys want, to ask or comment. I was exactly gonna ask about how to use the, when when you have authorization and stuff like that, how do you access it? But I guess I'm gonna look it up somewhere, but because <laughs> yeah, sometimes, uh, I don't know, yeah, if you're sharing it with someone, how does it work? Like if you're sharing a spreadsheet with someone, on Google, I feel, um, I, Google Docs. Again, I, 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 this is not my experience with, uh, with, with, um, with R, mm -hmm. but I had something that I had to share and to access with, with an API. So maybe there is. I didn't look specifically in this case for, for, for R, but what I had was they. I had to go to create an API key and uh, because That's I was giving, much easier. Exactly because I was giving. So instead of doing, because I think there's an option to say, okay, I'm sharing this Google sheet to Gabby and I have, so I'm the owner of the sheet and I share it to Gab, Gabby. So I have Gabby's email and I put that in as a, as a, as an option. And then I, Gabby has to do, I don't know what to use to log in with her user, so to speak, to be able to access the data via R. I think that's a way to do it, but it's not what I did. I, I went mm -hmm. and there is an option. I don't recall the step, but there is an option that you say, okay, I need to have access to this um, sheet using an API and then Google Sheets there. They, um, I will look that up and maybe send it to you. You're, like, you will you're, then you're doing create... it. You're, you're making it way too hard. <laughs> okay, okay. So if you no, just use... How is that? If you just use Google Sheets for mm -hmm. read sheet and you give it the ID or the link to the sheet, it will ask you to log in when you do that. Mm -hmm. And so you don't have to set anything. Now, if you're trying to automate it, that's a different story. But if you're just trying to do it yourself in your like our studio session, just do it. And Google Sheets 4 will open up a browser window and ask you to log in. Um, so you don't have to. Ah, that's easy. Yeah, you don't have to do anything hard. <laughs> but but right. that's a question because what I was thinking was if you are doing something that you don't want people to have to log in and you want to um like distribute it with an API, API guy or with some login, um like it's not the case I mean, the use case the use case that I had was that okay, it's it's a it's a private sheet. And I have a place where I can um, store an API key, like a, a secret, 
and then they were it's not r of of in this case it's it's not r so maybe with r it's different and so they had access to to the sheet using that secret key but uh nothing else so is something all possible also similar possible in, in r that I you mean, know of so i guess to clarify number one the first time you access the sheet you'll have to log in and then it saves your authentication or it can save your authentication it'll ask okay. you if you want to save it and so you only have to do it once and then um yes you can set things up but i don't like in almost no cases is that easier <laughs> so um if you're like if you're trying to automate that's a, a whole thing and you can use a uh uh I don't remember what they're called, user something um, or service account. You can make a, a user service account and that's a whole separate thing. Um, but for individuals, they'll have to go through all OAuth at some point. That's the, the authorization that you do. Mm -hmm. And just letting Google Sheets handle it is like the easiest way to do that because then it'll save their authentication Every once in a while, it'll ask them if they want to refresh. You can you can have multiple, like if you have a work account and a home account, you can have both of those set up and it'll just like ask you which one to use. So for 99% of cases, I would That's just do, that. just do what it does. Um, now I say that knowing that I have many times had been in that other 1%, so maybe it isn't really 99%. Um, and it's a little bit, I think they've got it mostly cleared up, but it's a little bit complicated on if you're running RStudio on a server, um, the, the, you know, the RStudio server version, um, because you have to tell it like where to go, where to send the login page or where to look for the login page. Um, but all of that's documented in Google Sheets. And again, most of the time you can just run the read sheet and it'll say oh i don't know who you are i need to ask before i can do this so and that you you when you do that you have don't use this one don't use the this one so what okay. you're doing is do the reach yeah. without doing this one and then it well, will automatically because gs4 d auth is it's deauthorized it's it's exactly. deleting the authorization um so, you know, you can call that, but then you'll have to, you'll have to read sheet again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, you'll have to, you know, author, authorize again when you read sheet because literally GS4 D auth is just delete, uh, deleting your authorization. So it's not telling them to do it. Ah, okay. When oh, you it's, do yeah, that, no, it's you local. Exactly. You, you are deleting, you are deleting the authorization that that's, that's local. And what you are doing with read sheet is because it's a public sheet, then you can read without any problem. That's basically yes. what, what's happening there. Right. And so actually, you know, back to the thing we discussed before the video started, chances are you just don't want to run GS4 D auth within uh, the things that you run mm. in, in, in when building the book because... Yeah, it will, it will mess no, up. Yeah, the authorizing. So it's it's probably like, I don't know. I it, to make it run, it's probably it only turned green. So I don't know. I guess it's working, but it shouldn't work. <laughs> so I guess it's yeah because it's all public sheets that we're dealing with. It's fine. It's, yeah, it doesn't matter. But um, so in this case, uh, make it I, faster I, if we actually auth, uh, or not faster, but we can make it less uh less broken if we do an auth but doing auth in an automated system is like i was saying that's the one percent cases where it's more complicated and so don't worry about that for the notes making the notes work is an extra level or the slides it's an extra level of hard um because you have to save the authorization as a string in the um the secrets on GitHub. Exactly. And something. Yes. Yeah. It's okay. like I've done it and it, it's doable, but it's a little bit complicated. So in this specific case, as a as a for this case, um, I have to rename the chunks and you're telling you say it's better if I rather not 
use this one. I mean, it, the deal? it shouldn't matter. It shouldn't do anything because we never authed in the first place. So exactly. Now yeah. that I think about it, it doesn't do any anything at all. Um, and it's fine as long as we don't build over and over and over. It's just it's gonna eventually run out if you're not logged in. And even if you're logged in, it'll eventually lock, run it's out. Exactly <laughs> but, there are limits. Exactly. Yeah. But yeah. if you're not logged in, what it's what it's doing is pretty sure it's using a um, service account, like a, a tidyverse service account. And so that service account fills up with everyone who's using it, who isn't logged uh, in. Yeah, exactly. Because that, that's, <laughs> I think that would be the issue. So it's not, it's to yeah. my credit or, or you or the credit, but it's like some, okay. okay, I, okay. I think Wait. that's what's going on. And so, okay. Okay. um. I mean, or it's just an IP limit or uh, something. I don't know exactly how okay. Google does that limit when it's a when it's not authorized. But um, okay. so yeah. yeah. Because yesterday I did it. I uh, because I was doing a, 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 a because I was checking out a couple of things and doing some some tests. So I did. I don't know. I did hit the uh, net net like uh, maybe ten times. And right. Each of each of those ten, ten times I was doing the ah, then that's why. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly. At least part of it, yes, for yeah, sure. Exactly. Um, so... yeah. So, whatever. It's probably not a big deal, but uh, that is probably why they had it turned off, or and it's possible I turned it off at some point because it was just not working. Um, okay. but we can make it work. Uh. Just a, a side note on all this, um, the book clubber for for the data science learning community, the database for that is just Google Sheets and actually Google Drive. Um, we save RDSs to Google Drive for that. So um, someday I'll move that to an actual database, but it was easy enough to uh, just use those packages and. That's why it's slow sometimes too. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, it's it's a, a good skill to know because that's a really low hanging fruit for collecting data. You can set up a form. You can, you know, anybody can learn to use Google Sheets well enough to give you some data entry or whatever. And then, and even if they can't, you can set up a form and send it to them, and they can fill that out. So, uh, I'm a big fan of starting with that and then you know, go to a database when and if you need to. <laughs> mm. All right. So yeah, next week we'll talk in the chat or in the in Slack. Um, hopefully, at least the three of us can meet and, and go over databases. Um, I'll let you know, though, if I'll be around. If not, two of you could uh, discuss databases and then uh, Floris and I will just, or we'll catch up, and anyone else who's keeping up with us online. So. All right. Okay. See you on Slack. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Yeah, bye, bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. bye.